How often do we pause and consider the tumultuous undercurrents flowing beneath the calm surfaces of our well-orchestrated lives? Can an incident as seemingly minor as a playground scuffle reveal the true nature of humanity's struggle with violence, morality, and societal decay? Welcome, my dear viewers, to a journey through the razor-sharp wit and profound observations of Yasmin Areza's The God of Carnage. A story that begins with a simple altercation between two boys and spirals into an unmasking of the civilized veneer of four adults revealing the primal forces that drive us all. In a chic Parisian apartment, two couples meet with the intention of resolving a conflict between their sons in a civilized manner. Veronique and Michel Houillet, on one side, are the quintessential middle-class intellectuals, with Veronique being the artistic soul and Michel the entrepreneur. On the other, Annette and Alain Rai, with Alain's legal mind and Annette's possibly scholarly background, represent another facet of the upper bourgeois stratum. As they come together to discuss the violent incident that left one child physically injured, the scene is set not just for a discussion about their children, but for a much deeper excavation of their personal ethics, values, and the societal norms that govern their behavior. Yasmina Reza ingeniously uses this setup to strip away the layers of societal polish and decorum, revealing the raw, unfiltered human nature lurking beneath. The title itself, The God of Carnage, serves as a prophetic glimpse into the unraveling of civility, suggesting that beneath the superficial gentility of these well-to-do adults lies a propensity for violence and chaos. This violence is not just physical. It's verbal, emotional, and deeply psychological, painting a vivid picture of the human condition in all its glory and depravity. As the evening progresses, what begins as a rational, if somewhat stiff, conversation quickly devolves into a spectacle of accusations, recriminations, and outright hostility. The incident involving their children becomes a catalyst, unleashing hidden resentments, unspoken frustrations, and long-buried fears. It's fascinating to observe how Reza juxtaposes the initial, somewhat trivial act of violence between the children with the far more destructive and far-reaching consequences of the adults' verbal and emotional onslaughts. The setting of this tragic comedy is meticulously chosen to reflect the characters' social standing and aspirations. Their educated backgrounds, successful careers, and the aesthetic appreciation of their environment suggest a life of comfort and refinement. Yet, as the evening wears on, these markers of success and civility become weapons in a battle for moral superiority, revealing deep-seated insecurities and prejudices. The art books, the clafouti, the tulips, all symbols of their cultured lives, become casualties in the escalating conflict, underscoring the fragility of their constructed identities. One of the most striking elements of Reza's play is her exploration of language and its power to both connect and divide. The conversation begins with polite, even pretentious exchanges, but as the veneer of civility cracks, the language becomes crude and aggressive. This shift not only highlights the character's regression to more primal forms of communication, but also serves as a commentary on the power dynamics at play. Words in The God of Carnage are weapons, shields, and ultimately the unravelers of the thin fabric of societal norms that the characters cling to. The characters in The God of Carnage are a fascinating study in contradiction and complexity. Each character, with their unique blend of virtues and vices, becomes a mirror reflecting the myriad facets of human nature. Veronique's passion for art and advocacy belies a smug superiority and a quickness to judge. Michelle's entrepreneurial success masks a certain crudeness and a propensity for cruelty. Alain's legal acumen is juxtaposed with his cynical worldview and moral flexibility 
while Annette's vomiting on the art books symbolizes the physical manifestation of the internal chaos that each character experiences. Reza doesn't just present these characters for our judgment or amusement. She invites us to see parts of ourselves in their flaws and struggles. The play becomes a canvas on which the darker aspects of human nature are explored, from envy and jealousy to vanity and the deep-seated fear of failure. These themes resonate because they speak to the universal experience of being human, of navigating the complexities of life, relationships, and our own inner turmoils. The escalation of conflict in the God of Carnage is not just a spectacle of middle-class manners gone awry. It's a profound commentary on the human condition. The play forces us to confront uncomfortable truths about our own capacity for violence, our inherent selfishness, and the precarious nature of our social constructs. Reza masterfully uses the microcosm of a living room meeting to explore broader questions about civilization, morality, and the inherent contradictions of human nature. As the evening devolves into chaos, the play offers no easy answers or moral judgments. Instead, it holds up a mirror to the audience, asking us to reflect on our own values, behaviors, and the thin line that separates civility from savagery. The God of Carnage challenges us to consider whether the veneer of society is but a fragile illusion easily shattered by the basest of our instincts. Yasmina Reza's brilliance lies not just in her sharp dialogue and vivid characterization, but in her ability to weave these elements into a compelling narrative that is both specific and universal. The God of Carnage, while set in a particular time and place, speaks to timeless themes of human nature, societal norms, and the ever-present shadow of our primal instincts. In the end, The God of Carnage is a testament to the power of theater to provoke thought, evoke emotion, and reflect the complexities of the human experience. As the character's evening of polite conversation descends into a myelonic frenzy of accusations, confessions, and reconciliations, we are reminded of the fragile nature of our societal constructs and the deep-seated fears and desires that drive us. Yasmina Reza's work invites us to question not just the character's choices and behaviors, but our own. In the mirror of The God of Carnage, we see the reflections of our own conflicts, our struggles to balance our baser instincts with the demands of civility and the ongoing battle between our desire for peace and our propensity for destruction. As we reflect on the themes and questions raised by the God of Carnage, we are left to ponder the nature of violence, the illusion of civility, and the complex tapestry of human relationships. The play does not provide clear answers, but it does offer a rich ground for exploration and discussion about the essence of our shared humanity. In closing, Yasmina Reza's The God of Carnage serves as a powerful reminder of the thin line between civilization and savagery, the complexity of human relationships, and the enduring quest for understanding and empathy amidst the chaos of existence. It's a play that not only entertains, but also challenges, confronts, and enlightens, holding a mirror up to our own lives and asking us to examine the reflections we find there. Thank you, dear viewers, for joining me on this exploration of the God of Carnage. Your engagement and curiosity make these discussions not just possible, but deeply rewarding. I hope this journey has provided you with new insights and perspectives, and perhaps even challenged you to reflect on your own views and behaviors. Until next time, take care, and remember to seek the beauty in the chaos, the truth in the conflict, and the humanity in ourselves and others. Goodbye, and thank you for your time and attention.